To get to the desktop settings, we're going into Menu. Then we want to see Favorites in the upper right hand corner. So the bottom column has Preferences. Then over on the right column, we want to select Desktop Settings. Here on the left, we see Desktop is selected. And then to the right, we see Desktop Icons. Select the items you want to see on the desktop. And we've got Computer, Home, Trash, Network, and Mounted Volumes. To see these on our desktop, we want to make sure the checkbox is checked. Unchecking it hides it. Checking it shows it. The first one up here is Computer. Double-clicking that to open it is just like the My Computer on Windows. We see we've got the hard drive and any file systems attached. And then on the left, some main folders that we would use. I'll close this. Next one down is Home. Double-clicking on that opens up the File Manager and shows us all the files in our Home folder. This is where we want to store all our data and documents that we want to store on this hard drive for this logon ID. One reason for storing them all on this folder is if we want to do a backup. All we need to do is back up this file and we have all our personal folders backed up. The next one down is trash can. Turning that on shows us the trash can. Double clicking opens it up. We have nothing in there yet. I'm going to open up the home folder and right click to create a new document. The second one down, create an empty file. We will call this new file dash t. And then I will add dot txt to make this a text file and enter to create it. Double clicking will open this in our text editor, which is called Pluma. And I will paste in a simple sentence. This is my test document for the trash. Let's save this. Now I will save as file, save as. And we will call this new file dash D. Save. And then I will change for the trash to be to delete and save that. So I've got my two files, new file D and new file T. If I click on the new file T and press the delete key, it's deleted. Where does it go? Into the trash can. Now we see that there is something in the trash can. Double clicking shows us the new file T. From here, if I empty the trash that empties all the files that are in the trash can, I can click on it and select it and restore selected items. I can also right click on this and delete permanently or restore from here. I'll restore it. And close the trash can. We see it's now empty. To delete something, I can right click and delete or move to trash or I can hold down the shift key and press delete. This is telling me I will delete this file permanently. I don't want to do that yet. I will select both of these and place them in the trash. We see they're in the trash can and I will hide the trash. This next one shows us any network connections we are having and mounted volumes. That's basically for our flash drive or DVD. It will show them on our desktop and we can right click and eject them to safely remove them from the computer. Skipping down to the interface section, we see show icons on menu and show icons on buttons. I'll move this to the right and open up the update manager. To show icons on menus, well, right here we've got Go. We see all the icons right there. If I uncheck this, come back to Go, come back to Go, they're still there. I think I need to refresh this window. Go, and now they're gone. 
So I did have to close and reopen to hide those. Let's turn it back on and check. And there they are back. Show buttons. That works the same way on buttons, but so far I haven't found any buttons that this works on. It's probably because programs override these default settings. The context menus. Show input method menu in context menus and show Unicode control character menu in context menu. What these are for are for people who need to see special characters. The Unicode controls are like return and new line character and the input method are for people that need other languages like Chinese or Japanese with special characters that they would be using on a regular basis. Down in the toolbar section we have button labels, text beside item. Where we see this is the back and the forward. We see the icon and then the text. If I change this, I'll make this text below items. Now we see the icon and the forward, icon and back. The up also shows up as well as the stop and reload. We also have show icons only. There we go. And text only. I am going to change this to be text below items. And then we've got our icon size of large. I will change this to only icons so we can see the difference between the large and the small. There's the small, there's the large, and I'll change this back so I can see my text below the item. Coming down to the terminal, we have one thing under the terminal that is show fortune cookies. I am going to open up a terminal and show what it looks like when we open it with the show fortune cookies turned off. Then I'm going to come over and turn on the fortune cookies menu, terminal, and here we see a random message. Some people find these fun and amusing. Other people find this annoying. You can turn this on or off. I will turn this off and close my terminal. The last section we're going to look at is Windows. And I'm going to start here in the center where it says Appearance. Use System Font in Title Bar. We looked at the fonts in a previous video. What they're actually asking us is, instead of using the specific font for the title bars, do you want to use the application font in the title bar? Which would make this window font title the same as the text in the window. And here we see we're using the same font. Turning this off defaults to the title bar font. This next one, buttons for layout, we've got traditional on the right. These are the buttons they're referring to. And right clicking Mac style on the left brings them over here to the left. To see how this looks a little better, I'm going to right click, open up the desktop backgrounds. And I'm going to come up and open the theme tab. When I switch this to Green Laguna, it looks a lot more like a Mac computer. That and the Black Mate. I am going to change this back to Mint X. Close. And change my style back to traditional. Under performance, we've got one here called Don't Show Window Content While Dragging Them. I'm moving the window around and we see it's moving the content when I drag it. If I click this checkbox, now when I go to move this window, I just move an outline here. This might come in handy if I wanted to see if a window would fit over to the right or to the left but I don't see a huge need for this. I have seen people use it though. I am going to leave this on to show the window content while I drag a window. These last two, Use Compositing and Windows Manager, I am going to save these two 
for the next video.